Wow, 2020 just flew by, didn't it? No sense being generous about it, this has easily been one of the worst hellscapes of a year for so many. And while a global pandemic may have slowed the number of actual games released, it certainly didn't affect their quality. Well, mostly. I have been blown away at the number of phenomenal titles we've received in 2020, especially right here at the end of the year, which made it especially hard to narrow down my favorites. But after much deliberation, I think I got a great list for you. Hey, I'm Snowman, and welcome to the 7th Annual Snow Globes. As always, we'll give out 5 awards, then cap things off with my Game of the Year. Let's get right to it. I like starting with my most disappointing game so I can get the negativity out of the way. Now, this doesn't mean the game is particularly awful, just that I had higher expectations for it before playing. And frankly, it's a way for me to air my grievances without making a full-blown bad game design or something. And this year, it's gotta go to Crash 4. On paper, I was really excited because they had seemingly fixed the issues I had with the original series. They added a reticle under your character so you can tell where you're going to land, and implementing a modern mode means no more pesky game overs. But even with all the creative new ideas like the masks and set pieces, I think I realized Crash Bandicoot just isn't for me. The controls still felt incredibly floaty and awkward, which is unfortunate because Crash insists on being a tough-as-nails precision platformer. You have a double jump, but it destroys any momentum you had, and it doesn't help that the platforms and hazards are hard to discern from the rest of the environment. The other characters move super slow, unreliably, or just plain janky. And while I didn't really enjoy the main campaign either, going for that 106% completion is just laughably torturous. There's a huge difference between hard but fair, and difficult just for the sake of making people miserable. A lot of the game looks like something I should be enjoying, but its core fundamentals were doing everything they could to make sure that didn't happen. And I'm starting to think platformers need to either have a fully 3D camera or stick to 2 2D, because this running directly away from the camera stuff isn't working for me. Next up is the One More Try Award. Many games this year cranked up the challenge, which is fantastic in my book, and led to countless deaths and hours of saying, oh, come on, just one more, I got this. But the most addicting title for me goes to Spelunky 2. This sequel is much harder than the original due to several factors. Tougher enemies, longer routes, and even crazier requirements to reach the secret endings. But it also provides so much more choice in how to tailor your run. Being able to go to different biomes and alter your strategies depending on where you end up leads to a massive amount of replayability. And all the secrets hiding in every corner has made me hit that quick retry button way more times than I can count. In my Spelunky 2 video, I focused on how familiar elements were switched up to keep the adventure fresh. But all the new stuff like challenge shops, posh nightclubs, and giant stone snakes are just as good at pulling me in for more. Derek Yu's design philosophy may mean you'll have a cheap death now and again that'll make you want to pull your hair out, but it also is a system that rewards mastery and flexibility, and just feels satisfying as you get farther and farther with each new attempt. The community discovering all of its hidden treasures when it first released was an experience unlike any other, and now that online multiplayer is fully implemented on PC, I imagine I'll continue booting up Spelunky 2 for years to come. Ah, here we go, the Quarantine Comfort Award. One of the worst parts of 2020 was not being able to go out and see my friends whenever I wanted. And it could have easily become quite lonely if it wasn't for the numerous games that kept everyone together in new ways, and gave us peace of mind when the rest of the world seemed so chaotic. The game that accomplished that the most for me was Animal Crossing New Horizons. Based on my video I made back in April, it might seem like I didn't enjoy my first Animal Crossing experience. But in reality, I was completely obsessed for a good month or two there. The combination of how progression was unlocked, the daily refreshing of events, and having so much to do was a perfect recipe for addiction. I actually enjoyed the custom clothing designer almost more than anything else. It was a blast drawing my favorite games and wearing them around town. In a way, it became the ultimate outlet to express my creativity and build the island however I wanted. But more importantly, it came at just the right time, where troubles in real life were starting to settle in and became a therapeutic release for many, many people. I mean, its sales numbers are all the evidence you need. I think its chill atmosphere and happy vacation aesthetic were a concoction that could not have thrived better than in a year as unique as this one. 
Whether it was simply out of boredom or much needed escapism, New Horizons was the most 2020 game of 2020. Here's a new one, the Snubbed Award. As I said, a ton of phenomenal games came onto my radar just recently, and that means unfortunately I didn't get a chance to talk about them this year on the channel. So the title that totally deserves to have its own video but didn't get the opportunity is The Pathless. It's hard to even describe what this game is, so let's start with the fact that it's made by the creators of Abzu. And I would say The Pathless is basically the fully realized version of that concept. You're still in an unbelievably beautiful world and trying to restore the land from its gloomy curse. And you do this by exploring the open fields and solving puzzles using the game's two main functions archery, and falconry. Yeah, you heard that right. You gain speed by hitting targets as you run around, and your bird companion can help you glide in the air or even carry weights and activate switches. Over time, things continue to build with mirrors to ricochet arrows, or mist that makes your falcon unusable so you have to platform on your own. As you collect medallions and cleanse towers, it eventually unlocks boss fights against guardians that have become corrupted, in which you need to chase them down, duke it out, and revive them to their former glory. It's incredibly unique, and something I did not expect to enjoy as much as I did a week before the end of the year. Oh, also, you can pet the falcon, so that's an easy 10 out of 10 for me. Finally, I wanted to take a look at the best ROM hack of the year. If you've watched my channel over the last 12 months, you know that Kaizo Mario has meant a lot to me, and my journey to beat some of the hardest games I've ever played has become one of my greatest accomplishments in 2020. So in an effort to honor that aspect, and also talk about a hack that I've absolutely loved, I'm giving this award to Bun Bun World 2. I used this game as my primary example when discussing using all the buffalo in a good game design a few weeks back, but there's so much more to love here. Yes, the way it loops back on its stages to make the most of its assets is nothing short of genius, but it also has some fantastic level ideas. Like one that purposefully overloads the sprite limit with these firework animations to turn yourself invisible for an added challenge. Or one where the gold tape is just to the left when you start, but the screen doesn't scroll that way, so you have to go the long way around to come back and reach it. Instead of using a switch palace to unlock the last castle like most other hacks, it somehow becomes available when you select player 2 and have completed all the other exits. And the final gauntlet is an homage to all the people that helped playtest the game, by letting them suggest a theme for their own screen in a back-to-back -back marathon. If you're worried about it being too difficult to try out for yourself, just know it was purposefully made as a beginner hack. So with a little practice and preparation, I think anyone could give it a go. It even has playable credits. There's just so much charm and cleverness here that it easily topped any other fan-made content I've played this year. All right, it's time to get to the game of the year. As always, it's so hard to pick a personal fave out of all the experiences I've had. But this one felt especially tough as some of my most anticipated titles released in 2020 as well. So without further ado, your nominees are... Hades Ori and the Will of the Wisps Paper Mario the Origami King Spelunky 2 and bug snacks. The game of the year goes to Hades. I surprised myself with this one. I thought for sure this would be going to Spelunky 2. I mean, I have undying admiration for the series, but even I'll admit that this one left me more irritated than I'd like. Hades, on the other hand, has the replayability of Spelunky without the frustration of cheap deaths and high stakes. Almost every person I've talked to who has played Hades started out getting slaughtered, but then improved over time until they were getting win streak after win streak with multiple weapons and heat. It somehow teaches you through its gameplay in such a stylish way that you feel stronger and smarter each and every run. And that's without mentioning its monumentally innovative approach to the roguelite formula, by unlocking lore and story beats as you complete runs and grow bonds with the other characters. Add in all the collectibles, upgrades, secret encounters, and things to build in the palace, and yep, that's a god tier game right there. 
There are a lot of reasons to appreciate Hades, from its voice acting, art and music, to the limitless ways to create your build and still come out successful, but for myself I'm most impressed with how the creators fit all they did into such a smooth package, and yet we're still a beacon of good development practices for the rest of the industry to take note of. Congrats Supergiant, you've earned it. Whew, there you have it. These are my favorite games of 2020, but I want to hear from you. What are your top games of the year and why? Or maybe even come up with your own categories for awards, why not? And tell me them in the comments below. Thanks for sticking around with me for another year. I can't thank you all enough for your continued support. Here's to a much better 2021 and even more excellent games to come in the future. I'll see you next time. Stay frosty, my friends. Hey everyone, I hope you have an outstanding holiday season. If you're wondering what to do with a little extra Christmas money, I'm gonna make one last plug for the Snowman Patreon. This is the number one way to help support the channel and future content. All funds go to improving the show and you get some frosty rewards in the process. If you wanna join this list of awesome people, you can chip in at patreon.com slash snowmangaming. Bye bye